When we first started talking about triads, we talked about how we can construct them by stacking thirds on top of each other. And we represented that visually in this chart, the triad box. Let's go through it one more time. We have, to get an augmented third, we stack a major third plus a major third. To get a major triad, we stack a major third plus a minor third. To get a minor triad, we get a we stack a minor third plus a major third. And then to get a diminished triad, we of course stack a minor third plus a minor third. We're gonna look at things today from a slightly different perspective. A new model, the root third fifth model. Let's look at the G major chord. Okay, G major, we have the notes G, B, and D. From the lens of our previous model, we have a major third from G to B, and then we have a minor third from B to D. With the root third fifth model, we can look at triads a little bit differently, like this. Every triad has three notes, a root, a third, and a fifth. The third and the fifth are defined as intervals away from the root. So in other words, in the previous model, we had this interval and then this interval. This is the previous model. Now in this model, we have this interval and then this interval. Both of these intervals are defined as away from the root. So G is our root, and B, being a major third away from G, is our third. And D, being a perfect fifth away from G, is our fifth, or our five. And we can write this as one, three, five. G is one, B is three, D is five. The major chord is gonna be a foundational reference point for this notation system, and you're gonna see how that folds out as we look at the other three triads. So just keep that in the back of your head for now. Okay, let's look at G minor. G minor, we have the notes G, B flat, and D. G is the root, so G is one. And D is, of course, still a perfect fifth away from G, so it's the five. So um, we have one different note. We have B flat, our third in this minor chord has been what we call flatted. It got moved down by a half step. And so we write it like this, one, flat three, five. One flat three, five. Where this is pronounced flat three, of course, to represent the fact that the third, which was previously major, has been flatted and moved down by a half step. This is the basic construction of a minor chord, one, flat three, five. You have a one, which is the root, a flat three, which is a minor third away from the root, and then a five, which is a perfect fifth away from the root. Let's go through the diminished and augmented chords as well. The G diminished triad has G, B flat, and now another alteration, D flat. I bet you can guess where this is going. G is the root, B flat, a minor third away from G, and D flat, a diminished fifth away from G. Remember, we took our major chord to be kind of a foundational reference point in the system. So relative to the major chord, the diminished chord has a root, which is the same as one. That's one. It has a flat three. And it also now has a flat five. One flat three, flat five. Okay, augmented chord. The augmented chord has G, B, and D sharp. Now, G is the root, B is a major third away from G, and D sharp is an augmented fifth away from G. So we write it like this. One, the same one as we've had in all the other triads, because it's the root. Three, not a flat three because we went back to that major third again. And now, a sharp five. one, three, sharp five, the basic construction of an augmented chord. So here we have it. This is the complete charted out root third fifth system for all four types of triads. 
Once again, it's very important to remember that the major chord is our point of reference in the system. Um, in a major chord, the root, third, and fifth are simply written as one, three, five. They're without qualifiers. It's just the numbers. The other triads are written with flats and sharps to represent how they deviate from the major chord, the foundation. With other chords that have more sharps and flats than the basic major chord, this can be a little bit more confusing. So let's look at another example, A major. According to our system, A major chord is written as 1, 3, 5. It's a major chord. It has an unqualified 1, 3, 5. The 1 is A. The 3 is C sharp. And the 5 is, whoops, is E. What about A minor? The A and the E are going to be the same because the 1 and 5 are the same between major and minor chords. But what about this flat 3 here? What about that? We started with 3 being C sharp. And so the flat 3 must be simply a half step below this. It must be C. This sometimes confuses people because we have B flat equals C. There's a flat up here describing this 3, but there's no flat anywhere near the C. And so they think, how can this be right? Sometimes they want to write C flat. That's, it, it's OK. You don't have to write C flat. In fact, that would be wrong. The, the flat in front of 3 just means that we must go one half step below the major third, whatever that is. So let's get one more example in. E flat major looks like this. We have the 1, 3, 5 is E flat, G, and B flat. E flat augmented is 1, 3, sharp 5. So we have the 1, which is E flat, the 3, which is G, and then the sharp 5 must be a half step above B flat, so it's B. There's no sharp anywhere near this B, so we have the equation sharp 5 equals B, which is correct. It's OK. The sharps don't have to be on either side of the equation. It's just sharp 5 is, of course, B because B is an augmented fifth away from E flat. It's very useful to think about triads in terms of this root third fifth construction because now we can ask questions like this. What is the flat third? of D minor. Well, the D minor chord has D, F, and A. So this would be 1, flat 3, 5. So the flat third would be F. Here's another question. E is the third of which major chord? Well, since it's a major chord, let's look at this E right here. We know that's 3. Since it's a major chord, if we start on E and go down a minor, excuse me, go down a major third, then we should get to the root. So down a major third from E is C. This must be 1. To be really thorough about it, a C major chord has 1, 3, 5, the 5 being G. There's your C major. I hope this makes sense. In your exercises, you'll be asked to identify roots, thirds, and fifths of different triads to make you much more familiar with this idea. And over time, I'm sure this will become very second nature to you. So if it's a little confusing right now, that's OK. Push through that. The questions and exercises will help clarify.